Every year, about 100 of my brother and sister firefighters lose their life in the line of duty. I'd like to talk to you today about the time I decided I was not going to be one of those. You see, as firefighters, we go into incredibly dark, dangerous environments. We weigh 80 pounds of gear on our backs. We get disoriented, we lose track of our tools. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens, we have to solve the mission. We have to put that fire out. We have a saying that we can't call 912 after you call 911. We have to solve the problem no matter what happens. So think about all the bad things that have happened in your life. Think about all the challenges that have happened. Think about, instead of those being bad things, Think about how they can make you stronger. It's in those trials and tribulations and that challenge is what's gonna get you through that. That is what discipline matters and that's where community matters. I remember six years ago lying on the couch and I saw a special on TV about this incredible photoluminescent glow-in-the-dark technology that was used in the World Trade Towers. It helped the people find their way down as the firefighters found their way up. I got to take my first fire and again go into that complete and total darkness. I could see the green glow off of my helmet reflecting off of his mask and his eyes were this big. I get outside in the parking lot and before you know all these other firefighters start coming up to me and they said, you were the only thing we could see in the darkness, this incredible green light. After about six months, my fire chief sat me down. He said, Zach, you have something that is gonna revolutionize and change the fire industry. You gotta stop treating this as a hobby and get a little more serious. And I remember that night, one of the quotes from one of my favorite leaders of our time, Teddy Roosevelt, he said, when you're faced with a monumental decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing, but the worst thing you can do is nothing. And so I went ahead and I refinanced my house, I maxed out my credit cards, took literally every penny that I owned, walked into the office of my company and told my boss that I was quitting to start my own job. And I remember her exact words, she said, Zach, being an entrepreneur is incredibly difficult. They fail, you, this is not gonna work out, you've got a good thing here, don't give it up. But I knew that her nor anybody else was gonna get in the way of my dream of changing the world with this incredible technology. And as I look over, I can see the drill instructor turn about face and walk away. And all I can see is his back. And in front of me, this abyss starts to open up, this black hole, the blackest hole I've ever seen. And I feel myself getting sucked into this darkness of this abyss. And the great philosopher Nietzsche once said, if you find yourself staring into the abyss and you stare long enough, eventually the abyss will stare back. And what that means is when you're in that point in your life where you're depressed, where there's challenges, where you're not in a good place, the longer you're there, the harder it is to get out. And what that abyss for me was self-doubt was the fact that I wasn't maybe working as hard as I could. And as I started to find myself in that, that pit, I realized the only way you can get out of that abyss is two things. Number one, you have to transform and change to stop what you got to get there. And number two is you have to rise up. You have to be elevated. You have to make a monumental change. And for me, as I got outside of that abyss and I cleared my eyes off, I became possessed. And I said, I'm gonna be the best Marine that ever was in the history of the Marine Corps. And from that point on, this transformational moment happened in my career where I became a great Marine. And it was because of having to go to the bottom. When you find yourself in that rock bottom, let the rock bottom be the foundation of the new castle that you're gonna build. True leadership is developing other leaders, is building other leaders that are out there. And so that new road comes ahead and you start to become this visionary. You become this person that, that has seen it and been there and done that. And you did that because of the challenges and the difficulties that happen. And then eventually of that visionary, when you're spending a lot of your time, you, you retire. So in, in the case of the military, it's very, very real. You take your uniform off for the last time, you don't put it back on, but you continue to serve. You're still a warrior that's out there. And then from that point, you go ahead and you move on. And so a, warrior, a visionary is like a, a Steve Jobs. He started Apple, the board of directors fired him from his own company. He went through a crucible that's unlike any of us can imagine, but he came back and he invented the iPhone. He invented all those incredible products. Another great visionary, Dwight Eisenhower, five-star general. We've only had a couple of those in the history of time. He got a coalition together of multiple different countries, brought them together to invade Normandy, kick out the Nazis and ultimately win the war. And when he took his uniform off, he became a president. That transition happened to become that visionary.